So once again, I'm going to put a slab and I'm going to put it on the inside. Okay, and I'm going to press it. Now I can take it off this. And I'm working, um, these are really light when they're, when they're complete because I'm actually giving it height by constantly pinching it. It's actually bringing the height of the slabs up. So when these are complete, they're going to be really light. And if I know that I want to make something that's really tall or really has a lot of volume in it, then I make my slabs a lot thicker and that gives me a lot of more, more room to kind of move from the inside out. And then this is the only one that I'm not going to work um, from the interior with, this little closing space. There's this little space up here and I'm going to want to close that off. And I'm going to put that slab, that's the only one that I put, on the outside. So right now it's starting to move a lot so I'm going to have to let it set up but I'm going to take this little tiny piece stick it on there. Okay. So um, I have this other piece that I made a little bit earlier. I'm going to cut into this to make a container um, and I'm going to make a little head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little flange, um, like you see right here, to sit inside of there. So it sits really nice, it rests really nice. I do two kinds of lids. I do one like this, a little flange, and then I do these little pillow boxes. Um, these little things, I usually put little rattles in them. But for today, I'm going to do a little flange. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut into this. And what I try to do is um, I always try to pick a seam where there's a little variation, I guess, in, in the line because this is going to act like a little key um, right here. So when I'm cutting, I cut on an angle. I'm going to cut right back into that seam. And this way, somebody who, who isn't as familiar with the work will know where this lid is supposed to be, right? That's what the the key is for, so you know where to place the top. So now I can see all of the marks, right? I built it and I see all of the marks in there. I see the layering and I don't want that because somebody's going to open this. So right at this point, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to smooth those down. I'm going to smooth all the little seam marks out. And I'm going to, it's hard, I'm going to try not to be too assertive or aggressive with this part because if I push, remember, from the inside um, too hard, it's going to change this form and then the form isn't going to sit on the bottom. So very lightly, I'm just going to try to get some of those those seams out. And I can, it's always, the, the option of paddling it again is always there. So if it gets too um, changed, if the form changes too much, I always can kind of paddle it back into, into space. So this is the key. Okay, so I'm going to know that that's always where that sits. And then I'm going to do some paddling because it's already, just from that little working on it, it's already transformed. Now, because it's open, if I do something that I don't like or if I make it go in and I shift it, um, always at this point I can go back in now and, and work from the inside out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little flange for this. So again, I'm just going to take a nice thin slab and I'm just going to cut about a half an inch. And then with this one, I am going to score and slip because this clay has set, set up for a couple of hours. And so I do want to make sure that it stays inside. Also, you want to make sure when you're making um, this insert that you make it long enough. You want it to sit probably about at least a quarter of an inch in there because that's what's going to keep it from falling off there and breaking. So you want to allow for that. And what I'm doing right now is just smoothing, working that 
seen into the inside so that you can't see. So it's nice and smooth. You don't know where those things are. So now I have to make sure it fits, which it could go either way. Sometimes it works. Okay, nice. It fits really nice right now. There's a good, tight fit. Now, of course, I'm going to clean up the inside there because I did go really quickly for the demo. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to soften the edges up so that they look nice and soft and clean. But I am going to let it sit in there and I'm going to let this harden up a little bit before I go and do that. Now, with me, something like this, where this has a little overbite, doesn't bother me because what I'm going to do is I'm really going to emphasize that. I'm going to go in and now this will probably be the front and I'm going to put a little overbite on this little person. So I, you know, we take a coil and attach a coil here so then his lip is really being pouty. So I'm going to change from this guy to this one. I had drawn a little line for myself of where the clay, where the face should start coming out and coming into space. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm just going to start pushing with my thumb. I'm going to start pushing out where that line is. There's a little seam right here. So I'm going to emphasize the seam and emphasize the facial expression by pushing from the inside out. What I'll do afterwards is I'll wrap this clay, this form, into a piece of plastic and then let it dry really slowly because this is a little bit more dry than obviously the soft clay that's going on top of it. and So it can kind of slow down the drying and dry at the same time so you don't have any breaking or anything. I'm thinking about those things for sure. I don't want it to break. It is going to look a little bit more cracky. It's going to get some cracks in it and I'm just going to smooth those cracks out or I'm going to leave them there. A lot of times I like the cracks. And then anytime when I work from it on the inside, it's not exactly going to line up. So now if you can see from, from this side, it's kind of starting to move. I want to really, it's not for me, it's personally not coming out into space. I have all of this coming out into space. So it's going to look a little boring if you have this side being flat and this side. So I'm really going to bring that lip out. I'm going to do the same thing with the nose. I'm going to give him a really big nose. Okay, and that's coming out a little bit more. It's all lined up. It sits really nicely on there actually. So I'm bringing that out into to space a little bit more. And then I'm going to come from the inside a little bit. If it gets too thin up here, I always can add some more wet clay from the inside which I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit more clay on the inside and then it allows me to push farther out so I can get this to go pretty, pretty far out by just adding a little bit more clay. And you know, this is a pretty big, pretty big face. Um, and so I'm going to give it some really big eyes and a really big nose. Let it a little bit, it's still pretty wet. Also, um, there was a little crack here, and I'm going to put the nose right over that, so that's going to fill in that. Now, once again, I said I wanted, you know, this is coming out of space, it's pretty big, this is coming out of space, so I'm going to have that nose come out. I'm just taking a little triangle of clay, and I'm just going to start building on that. And, and how I get the nostrils is I'll probably start working them right now is I usually just take my needle tool and start. And that starts giving me the basic no shape and it starts, you know, popping it out there. Now, noses don't usually look like that. So that's when I start putting this little ball of clay to start to develop this little piece that we have on our nose. And I'll just stick that on there. And get some really soft clay, which this is. And I'm just gonna form right on the tip of my finger just a little a little eye. So I'm just gonna fill this in with slip. 
And then this is nice and scored and slipped. Make sure that that's nice and wet, and then I'll just pop that on there. And my fingers are wet right now, so I'm just going to use this. And really make sure it is on there. Now sometimes I'll leave the eye just like that, you know, depends on the piece. But what I'm going to do for the, the eye here is I'm going to just do a little coil. I'm going to put a coil on the bottom and a coil right on the top there. And that's going to divide the eye. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go like this and smush that coil in. And then I'm going to do one on the bottom too. I think everything's on there pretty, pretty good now. And then I might kind of go back in here. Now this was an original seam line here, and that's what I kind of react to is, are those original seam lines. But sometimes I will go in and draw in my own seam lines. But if, I, if there's a seam line that I can work with, I, I usually do like to do that. Mm-hmm. 